Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And today, I want to go ahead and break down this newly cemented Philadelphia 76ers against New York Knicks playoff series. The Sixers end up making the playoffs after last night, winning their playing game against the Miami Heat in what was a very physical, ugly game. It wasn't Embiid's best performance, but he turned it up down the stretch, making some great plays. Maxi had a decent game and played some really solid defense on Jimmy Butler, actually, who we unfortunately did learn today suffered an MCL injury. It's going to keep him out for several weeks, so even if the Heat do make it out of their second playing game against the Bulls, it doesn't seem like he's going to be playing in the playoffs, which really sucks. Get well soon, Jimmy. Uh, Kyle Lowry had a massive revenge game against the team that traded him away. Nick Batum was the hero going berserk with 20 points and six threes. It wasn't pretty, especially going up against that Miami Heat zone defense, but in the end, they do get it done, earning themselves a spot in the playoffs after falling way down the standings during the lengthy Joel Embiid injury throughout the season. And with this win, they'll go ahead and match up against the two-seeded New York Knicks. They managed to grab that spot amidst an insane season between a ton of injuries to a bunch of key players, some big moves happening throughout the year, and of course, all being led by an all-NBA potentially first-teamer in Jalen Brunson. They faltered in the standings a little bit throughout the season, but ultimately did enough to grab that two-seed winning in Game 82 in overtime against the Chicago Bulls. They theoretically could have tried to lose to set up a battle with the Pacers, who many perceive as an easier matchup than Philly or Miami, but they wanted the smoke, they wanted the win, they wanted to grab that two seed, and that's how they've been all season. This is a team that, despite the injuries, isn't afraid of anybody. And now we're going to get an amazing match between two of the East's most injured teams that are kind of finding their rhythm, coming face-to-face -face in what feels like it could be an incredibly fun, lengthy matchup between two teams that are unbelievably hard to gauge at times. So let's get into it. I want to begin by talking about where the team stands statistically, get into some of the keys of the matchup, and then of course give you my prediction at the end of the video. Statistically, the Sixers finished with the 14th ranked offense, 11th ranked defense, and 9th best net rating, while the Knicks finished with the 7th offense, 9th defense, and the 5th best net rating. As you can see, New York has the advantage in each of these categories, but it is kind of hard to judge because the Sixers, again, played a majority of their season without Joel Embiid. In the time that Joel was playing before he was injured for a lengthy amount of time on January 30th, the Sixers were 6th sixth offensively, 8th eighth defensively, and had the 3rd best net rating in the league only behind the Oklahoma City Thunder and Boston, both of whom would eventually finish as the one seed in their respective conferences. Before Embiid's absence, the Sixers were looking like one of the best teams in the league. Nick Nurse was now at the helm, the best coach they've had in the Embiid era. You had Tyrese Maxey rising to an all-star level, the depth getting an upgrade post-James Harden trade, and Embiid playing the best basketball of his career with seemingly a second MVP on the way, one that many people weren't expecting from him. And since Embiid returned, we've seen some flashes of that team with the Sixers winning eight straight games going into the play-in, and they're now 32-8 and eight on the season in games with Embiid in the lineup, which is about a 66 win pace over an 82-game season. So over those 40 games, they've been dominant, but the Knicks at the same time, despite major injuries in their own right, although none of them has been as substantial as like losing a Joel Embiid, have stayed afloat greatly to land that two seed in the first place. This is why it's so hard to gauge because I don't know what version of Philly we're going to get, how do the Knicks look despite some of the injuries that are still lingering, and not to mention these two teams played four times this season where the Knicks did win the season series 3-1, but only one of those games came with Joel Embiid actually in the lineup. The Knicks did win a blowout in the game where he played, they won by double digits twice more, and in the middle lost an ugly 79-73 game where Philly was without both Maxi or Embiid, but I don't feel like I can take that much away from these matchups because of the constant injuries to both of these squads, so it really just does feel like the strangest matchup, especially when we get into some of the keys which only complicate things even further. So let's talk about those keys to the series. The biggest one by far is what version of Joel Embiid are we going to see in this matchup? He's had some great games since coming back from injury with 32, 13, and 7 against Orlando, 37, 11, 8, 3, and 2 against Detroit, 30, 12, and 1 against Memphis, and in not the playing game, but a game in the regular season, he had 29, 4, 3, 1, and 1 against Miami. He's had moments where he's looked like the dominant MVP of earlier in the season. But in the playing game against Miami, he did kind of struggle. 6 of 17 from the floor, missing a lot of very easy shots like gimme's right at the rim. But he did finish with 23, 15, 5, and 1, which is a perfectly good stat line. And he had some great plays down the stretch. They don't win this game if Joel Embiid doesn't knock down a couple of big threes in the fourth quarter, doesn't get that and one, had a couple great passes. That playmaking has been a big jump for him throughout the season. But overall in the game, he just seemed out of rhythm. He was clearly tired. I don't think his conditioning is quite there. And part of that could just be playing the physical mind. Miami Heat in that zone, but it's not like the Knicks are going to be that much of an easier matchup when it comes to that type of physicality. The Knicks have been a grinded out gritty type of team this entire season and have two great bigs to battle with Embiid in both Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartenstein. 
They're also monsters on the board, so Joel's going to have to do a lot of fighting and boxing out against those guys, as well as like a Josh Hart. The Knicks have defenders like Hart, as well as Ojin and Obi 2 who are going to constantly poke at him. They've got quick hands, a lot of length, so if they send double teams, it's going to be hard to pass out of those. It's going to be a lot to handle. Joel Embiid is going to have his hands full, both going up against those bigs, but also dealing with the overall Knicks swarming defense. If Philly wants any chance to extend or win this series, they need Embiid to be superhuman like he was earlier in the year, where he was playing legitimately some of the best individual basketball I've ever seen, scoring like 36 points per game, rebounding at a high level, defending at a high level, hyper-efficient. The playmaking was better than we had ever seen. It was the best version of Bede that has ever played the game. So if they can get that version of Embiid throughout this series, they're going to be extremely difficult to beat. But I also just worry about the conditioning with him, the state of his injury. There was a moment in, I believe it was the Magic game, the last one he played of the regular season, where he tweaked a little bit, went back to the locker room. It was very scary. Ultimately, he did finish that game. But moments like that, scary that he might end up tweaking it. And if Embiid misses any time, it's pretty much over for Philly. So there's a lot of question marks thrown around with him, but this is a chance for Embiid to shake a lot of the narrative surrounding him. And if he shows up and it is the best player in the series, shows some of those flashes that we've seen from him since coming back from injury and really puts it together, the Knicks do have a big problem on their hands. But if Embiid isn't 100% himself, or even if he is, the Sixers need other guys to step up as well. So my second key is, who's going to support Embiid in this matchup? Tyrus Maxey, of course, is the obvious answer as their second guy, but it is also the first time that he's been in the playoffs as a second star. How is he going to perform, especially when the Knicks have some very interesting defenders for him? Miles McBride is someone that I could see getting a lot of time against him. He had some success against him earlier in the season. I think he's probably going to get a majority of his looks going up against OJ Anobi, who is an insane defender to try and score against. Probably would have been all defense if he didn't miss a lot of games this season. Josh Hart is tenacious out there. Dante DiVincenzo is not a pushover. There's a lot of ways the Knicks could theoretically go. Regardless of who's on him though, they need him to stay aggressive, get downhill. That was a big reason why the Sixers were able to turn the game around last night against the Miami Heat in their zone. At halftime, Nick Nurse told Tyrus Maxey, just go ahead, you're faster than everybody, get downhill into the middle of the zone so we can bust it up a little bit. They need him to keep that level of aggression regardless of who's defending him, how is he shooting it, because if Maxey gets a little bit passive and they just focus all on getting the ball to Embiid, it's going to make them way too one-dimensional against a stacked Knicks defense. I'm also curious to see what Philly gets from their front court players because Embiid and Maxi are going to get all the attention in the world. Those other players are going to have to step up if the Sixers want to win this series. Can Kelly Oubre knock down shots reliably for them? He's been great for them the entire year. What does he do in a big role on the playoff stage? How does Buddy Heald look in his first ever playoff series, which is insane by the way that this is the first time Heald is going to be playing in the playoffs. Uh, what about Kyle Lowry as well, who was great against Miami in a revenge game, but may not have that much juice being near 40 years old. Batum was a hero in this game, but he doesn't have those type of explosions in him often. They're going to need a number of guys to step up across the roster. I don't think it's going to be any one player on a given night. It's got to be a conjunction of guys. And probably the biggest question mark for Philly is what did they get out of Tobias Harris? He was really bad against the Miami Heat. There was one possession where he missed like three or four layups in a row, continuously getting his own offensive board. He had some terrible bricks from three. It's not been a great year for Tobias. I mean, he even got benched down the stretch of that game and they're paying him $30 million to be their third option. They need him to be way better than he's been recently to win this series. They need him to be the guy that they paid a lot of money to contribute in a big way, especially because they're probably going to be fine with living with Tobias Harris beating them and he's going to have a chance to do so. I just don't know how much he's actually going to produce. Another big key for Philadelphia is the question of how do you slow down Jalen Brunson? He throughout the season made a legitimate all NBA first team case. It's not something I ever would have expected coming into the season. Definitely not when he signed with the Knicks a couple of off seasons ago. I thought maybe he would turn into an all-star here. No, he's become one of the best players in the entire world and has a great argument for being the best guard in the Eastern Conference. He's an efficient outside shooter from volume, a great mid-range talent, some of the best footwork in the world. He's clutch as hell. He's a complete offensive player. And over the final month of the season, he averaged 35 points, three rebounds and seven dimes while shooting a blistering 49-39-86 splits. That's unbelievable. There's a reason why he's pushing for that final All-NBA First Team spot, and he ended the season on a stretch where he led the Knicks to the two seed, including a five-game win streak to end the year. He's one of the league's premier guard talents. The question is, who guards him? Because Philly doesn't really have any great guard defenders to match up. Maxi, like I mentioned earlier, did pretty solid defensively against Miami, but Brunson is really tough to put him against in a seven-game series. Lowry is probably going to get a lot of matchups, but he's up there in age, and with how much Brunson is going to continuously be attacking, he may 
may not be the best option to try and hound him for like 38 minutes a game. Oubre could be a decent choice. He's gotten some matchups against Brunson in their previous battles throughout the season, but he's had some issues guarding him in those previous games. If Melton returns at some point, he's a pretty solid defender, but also hasn't played in a while. So there's no perfect option. I imagine the Sixers are going to throw a lot of pressure at him, throw multiple bodies. And hey, if watching Nick Nurse coach in previous playoff series is any indication, I wouldn't be surprised if they just throw everything at Jalen Brunson and try to make the other Knicks beat them in any way that they can. To the Sixers' credit, they have had some success against Brunson throughout the year in the games that he played against the Sixers, put up just 22.3 points on rougher shooting splits. It's well below what he's usually done. I don't know if this will continue to work because he's ridiculous and he was great in the playoffs last year, but it's not a bad sign for the Sixers, and if they're forcing the others to beat them, my big question for the Knicks, one of my biggest keys for them, is who else is going to step up. If they're doing the typical Nick Nurse, throw everything at the star player defense, who else is going to perform? If the Knicks were fully healthy, this would likely be Julius Randle's time to shine. He's never been a great playoff player, but having him, I think, would give them another great shot creator, which they could really use in this matchup because with him out for the entire season, there isn't that clear number two. Dante DiVincenzo has been fantastic, and he stepped up really big in the absence of Jalen Brunson for some games, Randle throughout most of the season, and just overall injuries. But my question is, is he ready to be the second leading scorer in the playoffs? And can he be that high level shot creator that they might need? Could it be Ojan Anobi, who has won a title before and been in these moments, but he isn't really a typical number two option. They'd rather have him spotting up in the corner or just knocking down threes in the perimeter, finishing shots around the rim rather than trying to create looks against some pretty good overall Sixers defenders at the wing position. I could see Bojan being big for them in this series off the bench, but at the same time, his defense is really rough. So how many minutes can they afford to play him? There are a lot of question marks surrounding their supporting guys. They're going to need somebody or multiple somebodies to step up outside of Brunson if Nick Nurse employs his usual tactics. And I am a little bit worried about who can produce consistently against this pretty tough Philly defense. A couple of guys that I think are X factors for this series include Josh Hart for the Knicks, where he is this constant energetic force. He's going to grab offensive rebounds. He's going to get in passing lanes. He's going to dime you up. And if he's knocking down his outside shots, could really swing this series. And for the Sixers, it probably is Buddy Heald. Again, first playoff games he's ever going to be playing. The Sixers need somebody to be a consistent outside threat with all the pressure and beat and max they're going to get. And if Heald can shoot lights out, it makes them way more difficult difficult to game plan for. But with all that in mind, that's my breakdown for the series. And now it's time to go ahead and make a prediction. I'll be honest in this moment, I'm not really sure who I'd pick in this series. I think either way, it's going to be a six to seven game slugfest. Both these teams are physical. They're stars on both sides, two good coaches and teams that have been ravaged by injuries, but seem still poised to make a run, especially with the Boston Celtics on the other side of the bracket. Whoever wins this series has a pretty good shot at making a run to their first conference finals in like 20 years. Most 2-7 matchups shouldn't be this close, but the Sixers aren't your typical 7 seed. I really do think they might have ended up in that 2 or 3 spot if they didn't deal with the Embiid injury. They're looking fantastic. It's really, really close. There's a reason that all the betting odds have this as basically a dead even split. I may change this prediction by the time I make my full overall NBA playoff predictions on Saturday, but for the moment... I think I'm ultimately going to lean the New York Knicks winning this in seven games. Embiid is still clearly not 100%, so I worry about him in this series, especially with great defensive bigs out there. I like the defensive personnel the Knicks have to throw up Maxi too. If guys like Dante DiVincenzo and Ojo Nanobi keep up their high-level supporting play on the offensive end as well, it's just going to be really tough for Philly to match. I feel like as well, the home court advantage will come into things with, I imagine it being a six to seven game series. If the Knicks can go ahead and just push it to seven, I think they will win in Madison Square Garden. They've been really good there this season. And the stuff that Brunson's been doing this entire last month makes me feel like he's just going to go into this, refuse to lose and take the Knicks over the hump, moving them on to the second round. Again, I really think the Sixers have a good shot to win this as well. It's like dead even in my eyes, a coin flip. Maybe I'll change this by Saturday, but for the moment, I am going to lean the New York Knicks just because there are a few more question marks for the Sixers than I think I have for New York at the moment. With all that being said, that's my prediction and my breakdown for this series. Let me know down below in the comments who you have winning and in how many games, who's your biggest X factor. What do you think about Jalen Brunson going into this Joel Embiid? Who's going to be the best player? What supporting pieces are the most important? What are some key points I may not have talked about? Things like that. I appreciate y'all watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. I will see you all later. Real one, say it back.